Welcome. Today is part two of our tear apart series. Um, we have a few computer components that we've been tearing apart or that we have plans to tear apart. We took apart an, a Dell Edge Server 4600 um, just a day or two ago. We're gonna take apart this uh, flat screen, this Acer monitor. It's a standard computer monitor. It's got uh, DVI and VGA inputs. So this one's a pretty old one. Um, I don't know the dimensions, I don't know the specs. We can measure this out, but this looks kind of like a 27 inch or 25 inch monitor here. So um, we're gonna tear it apart. Uh, this is a request. Um, this was donated to me. Um, the previous owner wanted to know what it looked like on the inside. Again, some of the things that we tear apart on this channel, we, um, we try to use the metals for different things. I'm after copper and aluminum to use in my forge, but while we're tearing things apart, I'm after the gold pins and the little capacitors that have rare metals in them for resale value. So um, let's get right into this. We're gonna tear apart this monitor. It shouldn't take too long. And uh, I'll show you what's inside. Let's go. So let's get started by finding all things that we can remove easily. So I don't see very many screws. There's one behind this mount, which we can take part of it off. This will be a steel piece. Can't really do much with the steel pieces and a lot of plastics. So we're gonna set this off to the side to be sold as scrap. Not helpful to us, not helpful to, at all. Um, as I cannot get access, it looks like there may be a trigger to be able to pull that off behind these panels, which I can pop off. And there it is. guarantee that the rest of the case is going to be a little bit more challenging to peel off. We'll get there when we get there. Let's take this off. My secret, it's not really a secret, but my secret for taking screws off without stripping the, the heads, is the harder you push down, the more force and the more friction you create, and the screwdriver cannot jump out of its track, out of the out of the screw head, and it allows you more of your torque to be applied to unscrewing the screw instead of stripping the head. So I like to push hard. Sometimes the subject that you're trying to unscrew is too fragile. And if you push on it too hard, you crack it. But when you're talking about the framing on computers or monitors, they're built to be a little bit roughly dealt with. So this is mostly hollow. It's plastic. It's got a little bit of a steel arm. Okay, so we have access to the one screw. I don't see any other screws on the back plate, which means we're gonna be doing a lot of prying, prying up the edges here. To be honest, that's my least favorite, especially on, on a surface that's unfamiliar to me. It's the most destructive, but I don't see screw holes anywhere.
Sometimes I get another screwdriver as a companion to help keep the gap open. Now, if I were trying to fix this, that was not the way to do it, as I just broke half of the, the little clasps. These, these plastic clasp ends fit, well, they'll be on the inside, but you'll, if we get a second, I'll show you. But these, I probably just broke half of them on this one side. Oh, it doesn't look like I broke any of them, but it doesn't matter. That wasn't the right way to do it if I was trying to fix this. As this is not, oh, it's a 23 inch. There you go. But as I'm not trying to actually fix this, um, huh, who cares? Throw that piece away. Okay, all monitors have some sort of a mounting bracket that will help keep all of the, the glass and the plastic components that make up the screen surface. Um, first of all, tied together well. And then it also gives mounting locations where tape and screws can be applied so that it fits inside of the housing design for that monitor. So let's, let's take a look at what we've got. I've never actually been into one of these monitors before. Let's flip this over and see if that monitor will just slide out. With a little bit of pulling, it feels like it has. And this is the inside of the plastic. No metals whatsoever. Nothing. So we can toss that to the side. We have our inputs, our power, DVI, VGA. And this is pretty loose. Feels like somebody may have actually already been in here before. They've, they've peeled back the tape. So maybe this was an attempt to be fixed. I'm not sure. Here's your interface, your buttons for the front. You've got, oh, they're even labeled. <laughs> We've got our color auto menu. I'm not sure what those guys are. Here's your power button. So yeah. This is your interface on the front of the screen, um, or in this case, it would have been the bottom, the buttons. We can pull that off, don't need that. And as I am seeing right here, it doesn't look like there's anything of any precious value on here. There are seven MLCCs, or six MLCCs and a resistor. Um, they're tiny, but we'll pluck them off anyway, put them in with all the rest that we've been collecting. Let's pull this off the back. Huh. Tape is garbage. Okay. So inside here, We've got some plugs. If I can get these unplugged, that'd be great. So, got a few screws. Looks like this is going to be our power, our power supply and our housing for power management. And then this is our inputs for the, the DVI and the VGA. It's actually pretty simple how this works. We'll get to it. And the wires that I just cut off went over here on the end of, of this power module. So this piece here, it doesn't look like it's only power. It's gonna have some brains on it too. So let's flip this over. Let's take these off and flip it over and see what we have. These little hex, hex bolts do actually hold hold it in place as well so we can give them a few turns and then they'll just come off with finger twists so this my gloves actually get annoying 
I like wearing gloves to help protect me from the metal shards, which I just gave myself one. They actually come off really easy once you get them started, so. Give them, give them a, either about a half or a full twist around. And then they come off pretty easy. Okay. Now that we have those off, this board should just come right out, which it does. We've got some pins for the power, a nice, what looks like six to eight pin, eight pin connector. We've got some flat backs up here. There'll be some gold pins inside your connectors there. There's some very tiny MLCCs on this board, so not very much value on this board, other than the pin tips, uh, gold plating, but that's about it. Even these pins aren't gold plated, so this board really doesn't have much value to it whatsoever. Let's move on to this power board, this power supply, or power distribution, I guess. Pull this up, and similarly, it is held in place by its connectors. We have very few connections here, so we should just be able to pull this out. But there's a lot of sharp, soldered pin connections here that I don't want to cut my hands on today, so I'm going to put my gloves back on to pull that out. There we have it. This is all steel. Makes a fun little tray, actually. Seal those holes up. This would make almost kind of like a noodle colander. <laughs> anyway, maybe useful someday. Set it over, the, over on the side with the steel. We have some pretty big capacitors in here. We've got a transformer, um, a heat sink. We got a few other Transformers here. We've got a few more voltage pieces there. I see a few MLCCs, but this this board is pretty much just power management. It's going to take a certain voltage in from the wall, and then it's going to change it down to voltage that the computer can use, that the monitor can use. So, really a pretty basic board. Nothing too fancy here. Um, I would say that other than these two elements that have copper, these two elements that may have small amounts of copper. I guess some thick gauge copper on these two pieces down here. You can see, you can see the copper winds around this cylinder. There's another one right there. I really don't see much else. There are two aluminum heat sinks, which are great, but I don't see anything else. Sometimes the power distribution coming straight out of the, straight out of the power socket can be copper. This will be twisted or braided copper. This is the ground wire, so we'd have to cut it open to really know for sure. So let's let's do that for the curiosity while we're here. Let's take a look. Just peel some of this shielding back. Get a better grip on it. It does not appear to be copper. It's stranded aluminum wiring as your ground. So not even that's valuable. So really just a few copper components and some really tiny little MLCCs. This board is also not very valuable. All right, so moving on. This is where a lot of the fun pieces are. I like taking apart monitors in general because I like the plexiglass type plastic um, uh, screen backs 
um, you have to be careful opening up older flat screens. They'll have little uh, tubes for the backlighting. These backlighting tubes will exist around the perimeter of your monitor. Typically it's on the top or on the top and the bottom, but you can find that they'll be everywhere on the sides, whatever. Um, if they break, I am not exactly sure what's in them. They're very similar to the, to the, to the, to the neon lights, the, the, the tube lighting in your standard office ceilings. Um, so if they're filled with a chemical that's not good to breathe, um, just by the fact that they're glass tubes and they break into fine little pieces, it's a pain in the neck. You have to vacuum your entire workspace. Just be careful as you open these up, not to, to fracture things that are on the perimeter. If you hear a small crack, that's probably what you heard, is the cracking of your um, backlight tubes. More modern monitors nowadays will have, um, will have LEDs to help light their, their backlight panel. So seeing that this one's probably a little bit on the older side, I'm expecting this one to have a backlight tube. Looks like there's a little bit of gold connection point on these. This little circuit that's behind this black plastic is going to be where the most valuable material that you can get from a monitor will be. So let's carefully peel this up. There we go. We can peel this off. So on here, you see gold plating in strips, as well as little spots where the, the MLCCs are on this side. They've got the little gold sockets that they're probably only eight to 12 karat gold plates, but they're gold nonetheless. So for gold recovery, you can, you can um, acid wash them off and they'll fall off eventually. Um, but really, these are the fun things too. So don't overlook these little guys. These are MLCCs. They're the monolithic crystal capacitors or um, ceramic capacitors. I've heard it both ways. Um, but these, these have palladium, silver, um, platinum, other, other, those really are the things that are in it. But those three things right there, you can pop all these off. You just take a that's what I actually use my chisel for, and I just pop it off. <laughs> Tiny little guy right there. Not sure if he's in focus. Not sure if he's in focus there, but this tiny little guy is what we're after with those. And uh, I just save those in the jar. I put the, all of these guys in a jar with the intent to sell on eBay or who knows where. So, so that's really the most valuable piece of what we're doing. Um, it may not be worth all the effort, but if you had 10, 20, 100 monitors sitting around and you could quickly peel off the, the, the plastic housing and the, and the steel plating and get to these, this is where the most valuable pieces are. So we'll set that off to the side and we'll continue on. That is not the last thing that we will find in here. There are other circuits that do exist, other possible connections. Okay, no screws on this one. This one allows you to pop it off. If you're careful with a screwdriver, you just push it in and just push past all of those little connection mount brackets. Keep in mind, there is actually glass on the screen. Many of these glass screens will crack. They won't shatter like the, the light tubing will, 
the backlight tubing. You'll find that it'll be taped in a number of places as well. More steel. I'm just bend it down so I can get it to sit in a bucket. Well, that one's not gonna bend. Set that off. Okay. So this back panel is gonna come off next. Figure out if there's anything else special that we need to do. No screws, no tape. Tape is actually not connected there. So let's do this. Grab our screwdriver again and start pulling the plastic forward so it comes off of its mount. And that came off relatively easily. Now this is the actual glass piece. So if I were to snap this, it would get the spider lines like you do with typical broken glass. It's got some interesting lighting properties to it. Um, probably a little bit of polarizing. There's not much we can salvage from this. Um, I guess if you really wanted to, it does have a tin oxide layer for the shine and you can run it through some acid wash to get the tin back. but. It's such a trace amount of tin that the acids just aren't worth it. Uh, I don't even know what that process looks like other than I've heard about it. Um, I'm always fascinated. You can see the pixels. When you look through this, you can see the lines that re represent the pixels. And so this is where your display actually happens. And then the backlight shines through so you can actually see it. So this is your screen. This is the glass. We're going to set that carefully off to the side. I do like what I find in here, though. A lot of times there's a, a nice piece of really thick, maybe two to three millimeter thick plexiglass. And that's used by the backlight to transfer the light across and then shine forward. So if we can do this without breaking the, the light, That'd be great. I feel that the light is going to be in this, this me, uh, metal housing up at the top. That's typically where it would be at the top. It looks like there's also one on the bottom. I can tell, I can tell because that's where the wires are going. These wires are power distribution. Oh, huh, still taped to the back. These wires are the power distribution to those lights. Um, so we've got to be very careful not to crack what's inside of those metal housings. Oh, I love this. This stuff is kind of trippy. It's like a little hall of mirrors reflecting, refracting. I'm not exactly sure its purpose, but somewhere they came up with the, the reason for it. So. It's almost like, I don't know, it's trippy stuff. Whoa. But to be honest, that's all garbage. This right here is what I am after. This is the plexiglass. At least it's typically plexiglass. I guess technically it could be real glass, but that would be pretty expensive. That were to crack. It actually looks like this one is already broken. Uh, 
Oh, did you hear the cracking? I am running really close to making another mistake with these lights. But I'm getting this glass piece out and it is thick. It is indeed a piece of plexiglass. It sounds like hitting it with plastic. It's not the same as glass. I like this little dot pattern it's got. It's kind of hard to see, but it's it's got this uh, painted on dot pattern. And that is a nice big piece of plexiglass. So yeah, we're gonna be using that for stuff. So we'll set that off to the side and set it down here. But indeed, here is your light that I was talking about. Oh, come here. This one has two. The second one fell down underneath this little piece of plastic. But this is a light. This is kind of hard to tell, I'm sure, but this is your light. And there's another set of them down here in the bottom. So you got two down there and two up here. And I can tell you right here that we're done. And I only broke this one a little bit. <laughs> but this is a typical teardown of a LCD monitor. You end up with a lot of steel, one piece of plexiglass, one control panel that has gold plating. I don't even know what these do. Why there's so much, it's like end to end gold plating. But uh, these, the ribbons connect right here at these intervals and they send the data up to be shown in pixels up on the screen. Um, but I don't know why that they just run the whole thing with gold instead of just make the little connections, but it's their, it's their business to do what they do. So we'll clean this up. We'll take those MLCCs off, maybe even that flat back right there. Uh, there may be gold inside this set of pins, but I'd say altogether, the value of this piece is probably less than a dollar maybe two, if we're lucky. Um, so the teardown, the most valuable, or the, at least to me, the most interesting piece of this whole teardown is this massive plexiglass panel. Well, thanks for watching. That was a pretty simple video. Um, there's not really much to monitors. Um, the, the most interesting part to me is the, as I've mentioned, it's the plexiglass. Um, I like the idea of being able to make things out of it. Um, once upon a time, I was a beekeeper and I would use plexiglass and things like that to, to construct solar ovens and things like that. The other thing that I want to do is I want to make a fume hood out of an, uh, an old fish tank. Um, it's about 40, well, when I turn it up on its end, it's about 48 inches tall and the opening is about 13 inches wide and um, I want the plexiglass so that I can, I can seal in the top two thirds of the fish tank. And um, then I can drill holes in the top and vent out with uh, old computer, old computer uh, case fans. I can vent the, the toxic air out. So that way I can, I can put a subject in and I can work with it safely as it sucks the air out the top and the plexiglass will help make it so that it will be a window and not a plastic obstruction. Um, being uh, kind of a scrapper as I am, um, I find it interesting that old monitors have the plexiglass that I'm after so I don't have to run to stores and go buy it. There was only about a dollar or two worth of copper. Um, and probably only about a quarter, 10 cents to a quarter's worth of aluminum. So altogether, I'd say 
if you take the value of the plexiglass out of all this, the material recovery of a monitor is down probably below $5. So I wouldn't spend money to buy monitors from people. Um, if people were just junking them and throwing them away, sure, I'd take them and I'd pull them apart. Every little bit adds up, but uh, um, I would really be most interested in the, in the plexiglass back, backlight panel. Thanks for watching. Look for the next video in the series. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. And uh, please like and subscribe.